this lesson will focus on um, exploring all the music possibilities within different styles of applications of the very uh, most elementary rudiment of all, which is the single stroke roll. The single stroke roll is also a very natural way to spell motion. If you think about the way we walk, the way we swim, in fact you don't even realize, but when you walk your motion goes into a single stroke. Alternating right, left, right, left, or left, right, left, right, just as this very natural appeal to it. And to me, because of that, if I establish a foundation of single strokes to create a cushion, to build up grooves and fills and solos ideas over that, now I know I can actually <clears throat> focus my entire attention to the music and not the coordination and physical aspect. Almost like the RAM memory in a computer, if you open too many softwares, the system slows down. But in, uh, if you just keep one window open, and in this case, the one we want to keep open is musicality, trying to sound as good as possible in relation to the music, you're very much increasing the odds of accomplishing that goal versus trying to approach it from a physical standpoint. So, <clears throat> of course... The first thing you want to do is have a good grasp of the rudiment itself. And I encourage you to always practice at all tempos, all dynamics. Starting with the opposite end as well. The next step would be to incorporate accents because music is made by loud notes, soft notes, notes that are in between volume wise and also by different sounds, low sounds, high pitched sounds. And so we're going to talk about that later as well, how to apply these single strokes to the different drums so that by utilizing different pitches we can create musical grooves. But for now, go back to the single stroke roll and learn how to play accents. As you can tell, there are many combinations and many books that can guide you through the process. Use your imagination, but do it. After you do it on your pad or on your hi-hat, on your snare drum, it's time to finally move those ideas to the drum set. And again, on the drum set, because of the different sound sources, the combinations <clears throat> are many, many more and it becomes a lot of fun to actually experiment and try to find out which ones create good musical patterns and which ones perhaps are only good coordination warm-up exercises but are not as good <clears throat> from a musical standpoint. At the end of each session, this is the most important thing, you should close any notepad or any exercises that you've been working on and you should just use your musical imagination. And if only two patterns will speak to you and will make music according to your taste and ability, those are the two valuable ones that you want to put in your pocket and keep forever in your playing. I'm going to start with 16 notes and I'll divide them among the two most common voices that every drummer uses to create a drum set beat, the hi-hat and the snare drum. I'm going to play both notes <clears throat> at the same volume for now. The next step 
would be to play the snare drum notes soft. Think of the snare drum as a second hi-hat. Now it's time to incorporate the accents, like I told you before. Now notice that because of the simplicity of this groove, and I'd like to quote Steve Jordan, great drummer, who is on his DVD, talks about the concept of simplicity is not stupidity. I love that quote very much because when you're playing something simple like that, I can feel the beat in every little possible subtlety and nuances of the beat. And basically, <clears throat> I'm able to swing it a little more if I want to. And that's great. The fact that you're in control of a beat and from a physical standpoint is something very simple allows you to actually focus on maybe what the bass player is doing or what the guitar player is doing or follow the body motion of the band leader which sometimes tells you a lot of important things about the feel of that particular song you're playing. Let me speed it up just a little bit using the same concept again the sticking for the right-handed people will be right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, and it's divided between hi-hat and snare drum. And I move the right hand back and forth between the hi-hat and the snare drum to play a backbeat, a loud accent on beat two and four. And the bass drum will just improvise some uh, patterns. As you noticed, I was able to swing a little more to beat and explore a little, more, a little bit more of a groove feel because, again, it's such a simple motion that once you start, you almost can't get out of it. It does feel like walking, which is the most natural thing we do. And, uh, of course, you know, once you start walking, you're not even thinking anymore right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. It becomes a perpetual motion and as you do it you become able to do uh, anything from drinking a coffee uh, to talk on your cell phone, you know, just careful on the crosswalk. But it becomes a, a natural thing. And this kind of drumming allows me to free up and really concentrate on the music by utilizing the simple sticking.